Hello and welcome to the Blue Monday podcast. Now in our fifth season, looking into the exciting happenings of Ipswich Town back in the 99-2000 season. My name is Richard Woodward and we are looking back on the playoff final against Barnsley from May 2000. And joining me, King of the Vlogs, Benjamin Bloom, ITFC Academy expert Joe Fares and Boo Menial, Mikey Penty-Smith. <laughs> There's four of us guys, this will only go well. Um, who wants to say how they're doing first, all at the same time? Go for it. How, how are you guys? How's hashtag lockdown for you? Crap. Crap. We've already spoken to about Joe's cry for help haircut. Is it, are you okay, Joe? It's all, it's all right now. Emma's not working today, so I have some help chasing the kids around. And I've, <laughs> and I've locked myself in the office for three hours in the sunshine. Richard, it's, it's 3.20 this. and Joe has started drinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's... <laughs> How many of these have you already had, if you're counting? And Mikey's on it as well. Mikey's just pulled Mikey out Penty well. Smith on it as well. This is good. Um, yeah, yeah, he drinks. Have so, got... Rich, what's the plan here then? So, thanks, Ben. So, let me tell you. Um, we have the full 90 minutes and all of the padding either sides and at half time from the playoff final back in um, 2000. We're doing a lot of 99 2000 content at the moment. And um, make sure you subscribe because plenty more where that came from. The Magellan interview, excellent, but more more like this, more in the pipeline. Um, so we're going to watch it. We're going to react to it in real time. We're going to try and be interesting as much as possible, guys. Um, and any anecdotes from the day and and um, relive it as if we're there. The plan was to watch this together at some point with um, in a venue somewhere, but obviously hashtag lockdown, we can't do that. So next best thing, Skype. How does that sound? Does, does that make sense? Brilliant. Right, so what we have to figure out now is how to coordinate so that we all start watching it at the same time. So I'll count down from 30 or, and then when I get, when I get to five, I'll stop counting it, but use, no. So, do the things. Right, so I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a one, two, three, and then no, press rock, play. Paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please don't. Rock, big scissors. <laughs> This I'm is how so nervous. If it's good enough for Jimmy Bullard and Keith Andrews, it's good enough for us. One, two, three, and then press play. All right. Okay. And then um, I got it. We're count, straight. Count it slowly though, so we okay. can, can. So feel you can the, get the structure. The beat, yeah? There's so much okay. pressure on this, isn't there? Right. Here we go. <laughs> <Did you see laughs> <Joe? laughs> Everyone on naught seconds. Most importantly, because right. Yes, Richard. Right. Good. This is this is going well. One, two, three, play. There we go. So we are it, live. We are live. We are running. So we've got a little bit of a crappy intro, but we go straight to the tunnel, and we'll have a little box where showing where again. Yeah, the big games, all the big games, the and there we are in the tunnel. George Burley and Dave Bassett, Rich, and look at James Scowcroft there. How do you think he's? How do you think he's feeling? Because they've they've let him walk out with the team here, but he's not playing, obviously. He's leading the team, actually, isn't he? So that's a good. Cause he was a player of the season that year, wasn't he? So it's. Uh, Nice um, thing for George to let him do that. Look at his, Joe, look at his expression, though. It's kind of dead behind the eyes. He's obviously very, very bittersweet, isn't it? Chris Ball, that, is the, that is the scoey look, though, isn't it, really, most of the time? Jim Mitchell had good things to say about him, didn't he? Isolate with your teammates. Chris Morgan's about to swear, isn't he, Mikey? There he is. There he is. <laughs> Live on the telly. I hope we've all seen that footage of Chris Morgan arguing with Neil Warnock in the... Um, Sheffield United promotion season. Look that yeah. up. If you haven't, oh look at the old Wembley Mike. Pirate Technics. Yeah. I love that Coca-Cola scoreboard first as well. Visit. Same. Full of blue, full of blue at the tunnel end as well. That's mm. interesting. Same Richard, we had what, final. what Mikey just said. First visit. I'd been to Wembley prior. I was at England versus Italy, 1997. Gianfranco, sco Gianfranco Zola scored the only goal, it was 1-0. So I saw Paolo Maldini play, and I'm not making it up, he was imperious, and his hair was perfect at the end of the game still. I thought you were going to compare him to Tony Mowbray and Richard Naylor as Gianfranco Zola. This is one of the things Jim commented on on the interview, but I know as well, sort of like when we got there, and you looked down Wembley Way, it was literally half blue, half red, real contrast of colours, and that when it, they showed a the stadium here, and it's just a total sea of blue at one end and a total sea of red at the others. 
I have a great say, look for all the corporate tickets that now go there. Yeah, true. Barnsley, guys, the Barnsley players looked a lot more focused and the Ipswich players looked a lot more relaxed. You wouldn't see, oh no, they're all starting to wave. No, I was just, just a bit worried. A few of the Ipswich players were getting a bit, oh, here I am. You know, mum coming and watching the school play or whatever. No, she, I, suppose, you know? I suppose the Barnsley fans were all at the far end, weren't they? So, a good wave. Where are you that. sat then, Rich? So I'm um, in, so on the right-hand side of the tunnel in the right in the corner, about halfway back, maybe two thirds of the way back, and um, and I didn't get to do Wembley Way. So this I, I teased this on the on the semi-final show with Joe and Mikey. So I'm I'm 16, I think, at this point. So slightly too young to have like a big piss up or a big like lads um, day of this. So I had to go with my old man, and he sorted out stuff with work colleagues including a coach which dropped us off right outside Wembley so I missed out Wembley way and then part way down on the journey my dad says oh yeah one of um, one of my colleagues kids is uh, he's gonna sit with you and I'm gonna go and sit with my aunt if that's all right so I sat with a total rando for the whole game missed out Wembley way and, and abandoned by my father so I've never forgiven him for that so I've just thrown him under the bus now so there's the first close up of Jono's blue hair if we notice Majilton's gone for long sleeves Jono the only person there wearing the training top in the not the um revealing the Ipswich um Ipswich colours there interesting yeah, I guess try, trying to keep his shoulder warm or something there must oh, have been a reason tell a lie yeah. someone else has got one on here oh no we're into the subs here because Richard Naylor is not going to start this game boys but hell is he going to finish it <laughs> so uh, um, I, I remember one of my um, friends' is. little brothers. Was it? There Look there he was is. In the, sorry. sorry, he was in the academy at this time, and he was. I think Ipswich under 11s or under 12s was supposed to be playing. Joe, sorry, can I just interrupt before the game? <laughs> sorry, Joe. Really quickly, George Burley has just said to that guest, "Well, Kieran's one of the best young players in the country," because that's all he said for about two years. But sorry, carry on. Where's with he from? Anecdote. Where's Burley from? Um, somewhere in between Bangladesh and um, somewhere in the subcontinent, basically. Joe, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so, so my mate's little brother was in the academy, and the under 11s or under 12s was supposed to be playing Barnsley before the game on the pitch here, and he'd been telling us how John had dyed his hair blue, so we sort of knew that was coming, but their game got cancelled because I think it rained for the whole weekend leading up to this. Mm. And similar to the 78 Cup final, I think, where the pitch ended up really boggy and and it had just been really, really wet. But sort of the game played in glorious sunshine, but sort of sort of belies the sort of weather that led up to it. Wasn't the pitch really bad? And the, and the previous well, player yeah, games played it up. Yeah, they'd, they'd, they'd be in the league, league, well, the Division mm. 2 playoff final on the Friday night, and I'm pretty sure it's chucking it down with rain. And then... And then it was chucking it down with rain all weekend as well, wasn't it? Uh, and Mike, pitch, Mike Sheeran. Both playoff finals mm. before that. I thought that was Sheeran. Mike Sheeran, QPR one spent 3.5 million on him. Dave Bassett, as my research tells me, picked him up on a free transfer. Rich, can we talk a little bit about um, about Barnsley for a second? Have you, have you, unlike the rest of us, done a bit of research, Ben? Of course, I've done some research. Um, Let's have a little looky here. So, Craig, um, Craig Hinkett at the main man. Uh, Craig Hinkett, another one. So, Bruce Dyer's gone for the Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man blonde hair. Yeah. Um, Craig Hinkett's gone for the skinhead, much like you, um, Joe, because I watched there back... He there's oh, there's Kieran. Kieran. Oh, yeah. He's worn his England top there. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's like Alan Partridge in the Castle GTX jacket. I'm going to talk over the National Anthem. Here, the national anthem. He was sorry, probably so. an England squad meetup there wasn't he I think he's come down from the meetup to watch the game that's true absolutely um so Barnsley went up in 97 under Danny Wilson that was the season town lost to Sheffield United they got relegated after one season in the Premier League they tried to do the whole bring one of the players in so John Hendry was the manager there's a Barnsley fan wearing a sombrero because they did used to chant it's just like watching Brazil there I think we, we go we chanted it back um, didn't we sorry keep going and um and a prop um they made John Hendry the manager and I had a look and John Hendry was only manager in his life for that season if you remember they sold Ashley Ward he was scoring all their goals halfway through the season so then Dave Bassett comes in um, for the start of this season and Dave Bassett at this point is a bit of a Mick McCarthy Neil Warnock he's your guy 
for promotion. He got Wimbledon promoted three times. Sheffield United once from the um, from the second tier into the top one. Got to the playoff final with Palace in '97, and then had got Forest promoted with Van Hooy, Duncan Campbell, and Stone um, in. That would have been 97, 98, the next season, wouldn't it? No, 98, 90. I can't remember which one. I think one of those two seasons. Basically, Bassett is a fearsome guy. Anyway, here comes the, the Barnsley team. He got Kevin Miller on a free from Chris Crystal Morgan. Palace's former club as well. Steve Chettle on a free. Jordan mentioned him, didn't he? There's, not, there's, there's a lot of ex-Forest players here, isn't there? Yeah, he just yeah. goes back to Forest and Palace, doesn't he? Through the back then. Oh, yeah, Am Kurt. I right that John Curtis was the guy that Jamie Carragher called out as the biggest waste of potential in his England under-21 team on Sky oh, recently? There he is. There's oh, him he was a good player, Higley. Very good. So was Barnard. Well, Jill mentioned Barnard as well. Yeah, up and down the left. Shipley. God, Shipley. Oh. Less said about him, the better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. After As my bottom shit, never week about Shipley. I don't, yeah. Quality um, graphics from Sky there. Bruce Dyer didn't start the playoff semi-final first leg against Birmingham. Robin van der Laan went off after two minutes. Dyer comes on and scores twice yeah, against it. Birmingham. Then he yeah. starts the second game and also scores. So basically, if van der Laan doesn't get injured, Dyer's probably not even starting this game. But he ends up in this playoff with um, three goals. But then again... Um, Marcus Stewart's going to end this playoffs with three goals, and Jim Jilton's already got three as well, hasn't he? Mm. So, um, oh, Richard Naylor's going to make an entrance. How can you have a number three playing centre mid and a oh, number eleven oh. playing anti-modern uh, I'm okay with the number eleven playing. Yeah, that's fine. Wing yeah. Back. That's yeah. okay, but the three playing centre mid. But interestingly, Joe, two um, two three five twos here mm. as well. Is that how they've been playing all season, or were they looking to match us up? Or? I, I couldn't tell you. I think they had, given it's Darren Barnard. I can't imagine him playing full, but um, we'd have to speak to a Barnsley fan, I think, to um, to verify that. Here comes here the official team, Rich. I think we probably know. No it, surprises here. Yeah. <laughs> Rich and Riley go. Jermaine Wright coming in was a bit of a surprise, wasn't it? But I suppose it was because of the Scowcroft injury, wasn't it? John, John McGreal back in for Wayne Brown. He'd missed the yeah. two games against Bolton, hadn't he? Yes. Of he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fetish played one and Brown played the other. And Croft I mean, join these, came in, uh, join these cutaways. Yeah. The graphics are good, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I think Joe pointed out that Fab Wilness didn't cover himself in glory at the start of the Bolton game. But then when you hear from Jim McGilton in the interview with Statman, when he says... After, he saw it very differently than us after 25 minutes he said you hold your hands up they outplayed us I never really saw it like that no. and I don't I, I don't see a huge amount of Barnsley team to be scared about I'd be I'd be papping it if we were playing Birmingham at this point I think another rough game that would have been wouldn't it cool look at that team look That's how so well good. balanced that so team so feels no, but look, even look at the back three yeah they're both centre backs but you've got the left footer on one side, side the right yeah. foot oh yeah, dear all players Legs, legs at wing back, absolute legs, legs in midfield, and they're two brilliant strikers. Mikey, we made the point in this series that Wilness became a great Ipswich player, but he's still, still finding his way here. And Croft probably yeah, yeah. was a little bit ahead of him there. But even, but even, even in the Premiership years, Burley ended up dropping him and sort of yeah, totally bombing him out at one yeah, point. Second and season, him the Premier in. gets totally bombed out, doesn't he? Balls, yeah. He bombs him out, doesn't he, after helping balls. So, I think he just hung around for a long time, Will. And once we dropped back into the Championship, he came into his own. But he probably wasn't quite good enough to be a top-end Championship, bottom-end Premier League player. And like Mikey said, Joe, um, that team is probably just one, just Scowcroft for right away from being... Not got a keeper team. on the bench. Yeah. yeah, no keeper on the bench for Barnsley. Oh. Yeah, so Nick, Nick, Nicky Eden was the big miss for Barnsley, so I think he usually played down at right wing back. Really good player, yes, Nicky Eden. Yeah. Um, he, was, he was their and, cat, which is when they were Alan Brazil. Team. Alan Brazil just recently, he just said we talked over it. Craig Hignett's the man that Ipswich have got to look out for in the, in the early stages. <laughs> well, let's so say about six minutes, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Mitre Ultimax as well. Oh, what a ball. classic. Ball. What a ball. And what guys, a ball. Richard picked up on this in the other two shows. We just keep bloody going behind after <laughs> I literally six no time in these games at all. Incredible. I think it was a six-minute goal in all three games. 
Yeah. Is Jono going to get injured straight away? Is he going to jump at the keeper yeah, straight yeah. away? Yeah, look. Oh, that's just. Federer. Federer. Are they what He's you just playing too at? hyped up, isn't yeah. it? This is Gazarin, Gazarin 91, isn't it? Let's have a look at this landing, boys. I don't think it's even that bad. Oh, he'd, right he'd already on. hurt it's it. It's not, he'd he's already, already hurt, hurt Joe. Yeah. But it's his left shoulder he feels. He doesn't even land anywhere near his left shoulder. He That's lands on his right, and this is left. So you can tell he's not fit because the one he gra oh, it's gone now, but he grabs the left shoulder. 30 seconds. I think he knows at this point. 13 seconds. Or Whoa, what a miss. Keep it tight, eh? Nice touch, Shipley. Just calm down. He's a good player at this level. <laughs> Oh, oh god, it is frantic, isn't it? Yeah. Jesus. Kind of right. Oof. We keep going really long, long for Jono again. That. I'm okay with that in the first few yeah. in the first few minutes back to front. That's fine. Oh, hello. Is that Higner? That's just ten match ban for that nowadays. The, that's just the way football was. Look at Venus at the could, top. You could fly in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those Mo are those. There you go, Joe. Get your player cam on. <laughs> you can watch I'm, not, um, Mr. I'm, not, I'm not trying to compare it to Bobby Robson team. But everyone talks about Bobby Robson team as being a oh, great passer in football. But when you look back, we're pretty willing to go from front to from back. Look to front at the 7 0 against West Brom, Joe. Half the, the goals are knocked down, aren't they? And like I say, in this. Venus and McGreal are happy to go long when they when they get the ball, but that's Venus all... knows though, it's not. He? That Magellan it's interview it. was really important, really interesting about the third goal. He said Venus, I knew that Venus would put it on Mo uh, around Mogger. You know that if you're going to go long, at least go along with direction. That's the issue now, isn't it? We well, it's, it's accurate. It's accurate long balls and getting people around where the ball is going to land as well, which is the key. I think we're starting to see as well with the. I remember Villa putting wing backs in in the mid 90s, and you look at how full backs are nowadays. You're starting to see now this thing of, oh, can we play from deeper down the sides? And you can see we're at the year 2000 and both teams playing um, wing backs at this point. I watched Arsenal Liverpool, the 1989 thing, and I know Dixon and Winterburn were great players, but I promise you. The entire game, they just hold their positions and boot the ball down the pitch. So you can see the evolution of where fullbacks are going to get to even even now. But nowadays, what we're watching here in 2000, a fullback isn't trusted. I've seen Magilton watching yeah, there come he, is. And get, he wants it, doesn't he? Tom Brady. <laughs> but even there, you see Stuart and Johnson don't have a great link up, do they? Just often they're sort of. They're not running around each other like you see when you've got Naylor or Scowcroft on there. It really was a case of Naylor or Scowcroft and Johnson or Stewart, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Joe, we were doing some work this morning um, on the channel, which will which will come up later, and I did watch back the Marcus Stewart interview, and he says when Naylor comes on, he didn't see that as the team being being weakened, that he had a good a good kind of synergy with with Naylor. Barnsley just got their first bit of territory there. Got That's some men, men forward. Yeah. Great defensive work. Is that a central midfielder ahead of the ball? Look at that from a it. We're all over him because he's been on our channel, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a deflected pass. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't well, watched it, though, watch the, watch the interview with Magilton, though. I mean, that was brilliant, wasn't it? Oh, superb. Also featuring Stat for, like, ten seconds in... <laughs> I think um, Dave Bassett is quite a clever manager because I think he's quite sort of chameleonic. You know, he was all long ball at Wimbledon. But like Joe said in the other um, show we did about this, I think he takes what he's got and moulds it and adds... I think he's got a good contact book. Like we said, all those players that came from Forest and Crystal Palace. That's Paul from Jilton, isn't it? Um, and this is very different than a Dave Bassett Wimbledon team or a Sheffield United team with Brian Dean up front or when he tried to follow Graham Taylor at um, Watford. What was his Palace team like? I'm trying to remember. His... He was at Palace, well, wasn't he, Bassett? We beat he was him only at Palace for one season. They lost 2-1 to... It must have been the one where Claridge shinned the one in on 120 minutes or what have you. Um, I'm actually going to lay out because I think we all know what's going to happen in the next phase of play here don't we so well, Sky have just I'm shown gonna, him haven't they very pressing I'm shut up I think. it's a long ball isn't it isn't it just a simple flick on as well it's not 
just all about the finish, isn't it? But he misses his target, doesn't he? Gets lucky. <laughs> Richard Wright had a touch yet. I think he's a short pass. I think he played a short pass to someone. Who are here today don't remember the uh, 78 Cup final of 22 years ago. Okay, yeah. Here's Dyer. Big Bruce. And he's managed to pull it back for Shipley. And it was well done. Mm, that's a big chance. Well, Bodies in the way. But what a block, Rob, as you said. McGreal. Dyer bullied Venus a little bit then, which is rare, isn't it? I thought Venus had done enough there. Right, here we go. That's got good pace. We're a little bit all over the place nice. at the moment, aren't we? Nice ball, that. Oh, that's a lucky that. I mean, he's the, Great. If the sky footage will show us. They, they figure out how fast he's hit that. They, they draw some graphics with an arrow in a second. Oh, really? It's travelling some, though. I mean, that's a fist. And, strong, and it moves in the air. Which I think we're in. I think we're in two things can be true position here. I think that's a brilliant strike, and I think it's too much space. And he's got too much space. But luckily, yeah, Mog has kind of got a man there. Joe, you know, how far is he out? He's 30 yards out. Mowbray's within his rights to just back off, and you wouldn't think he's going to smash that in off the bar. But this is what I was saying um, the other day when you see like Martin Royce and him. The way they just can strike oh. a ball. It's, it's just swear on it. A, just a quality strike, isn't it? They're just, just very little back lift and just catch it so sweetly. And it's interesting because we're not in number 10 land here, are we? They're, they're number eight. Um, it's not like he's going to play in the hole. They're, they're runners from midfield in, in this um, era. I, th I think it's a great goal. I, th I think if you're Richard Wright there, you'd, you'd do exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, just picking up on Joe's point about... The quality of strike. Twenty first goal, goal of the season. Twenty first goal of the season. Right, go ahead, Frederick. Michael. Sorry, but it, it it now seems to be in modern day football. If you look down at Championship and League One, it's like a specialist skill, being able to strike the ball nicely. So like Luke Garbutt, for example, has got he strikes the ball superbly. But it's like that's his specialist skill. So you allow him being weak in other areas. You look at players like Hignett, Royce, they're they're classy players, like they can pick passes as well. It's not all about the ball striking. You think it's Dave Bassett's watch there, boys, as kind of well. Bling bling. Are you guys worried at this point? I'm, I'm trying to recall back whether I was worried at this point. I, Still really I early, think I was ever. I, I wasn't really worried. The only thing that was worrying me is I was sitting next to quite a big fat guy, <laughs> and the seats are quite small there. And every time something bad happened, he like leaned, leaned, and just sort of like crashed me on my seat. <laughs> in the sort of old Wembley seats. I think it's actually might be a there. really nice pass. I don't know whether that was. There you go. There's the... oh, 56.7 miles. Yards. Yeah. The pass to break the lines out of defence is really good. It's a really good goal by. Well, I think by we're a little bit of sixes and sevens of position. I think that last attack. We haven't really got our shape back. Um, Rich, talking about the are we worried thing. Um, I'll echo what Joe just said and what Jim Majilton said. I thought in any of these playoff seasons, if we got to Wembley, we would win. I just felt that, OK, Kirbisley, Kendall, Allardyce, they can have us in a two-leg playoff semi-final. But I just thought the football we played, and because we're Ipswich and we'd won in 78, if we went to Wembley, I just thought we're going to win and even I suppose at this point we're all going oh well we've been behind in about yeah, four times, seven of our last yeah. ten games you know, so. four times in the in the two playoff games that preceded it as well so yeah and it's still early five times Rich look at Mogga Holland Clapham but see what I mean we're, we're quite direct aren't we though we sort of work it. As soon as there's an opportunity to get the ball forward, we do try and get it forward quickly. Is it? Um, I love. Is it the thick of it where they talk about cupping imaginary tits for that? that <laughs> I was hand just going to say, um, and this is not a criticism of George Burley, who is my favourite Ipswich manager since I've been watching. But he's very much a manager, isn't he? And sometimes I would watch this and this and this and this, and I think, George, what what does that mean? You know, and. Um, I think David Johnson made it very clear that Dale Roberts, um, rest in peace, did the majority of the um, actual technical work here, and George was very much putting the team together and giving it the giving it the philosophy. But sometimes I would watch him directing traffic, and um, it wasn't obvious what he was doing. Joe's having his second pint of. Oh, that's my poor. I've had a shocker. Go and get yourself a flake. 
If you notice the territory though now, Rich, is oh, um, camped, we're coming we? into the game. It's all in their half, isn't it? We just got a really we're really energetic, aren't we? And they play it around nice though, don't they? They're a good side. They're, they're better than I remember them being, actually. Mm. Um, well, that Majorton point, I'd never thought of that, as you said before, Ben. Until Majorton. You just think Bassett's going to be long ball as well, Rich, don't you? Yeah. Dyer's I'd say we're, busy, we're more direct than they are, I'd say. Yeah. Matt Holland looks we're boost really, already. We're really high tempo, get the ball forwards, get men forwards, bring the play up with us, isn't it? Tinkler. Oof. There's not much of a sense of control from either team in this game, though, is it? Well, 10 minutes and it still hasn't settled down, really, is it? But, Rich, even those good little bits of um, Barnsley passing, we're pressing like pressing like hell, and um, it's not overly controlled, is it? Stuart always coming deep, isn't he? It's nice a lovely bit of play, that is. Good tackle there. Johnson's, First time Jermaine Johnson's Wright, off really it, you can right. tell. Yeah, get him okay. off. Get off. So, did you just I, see that first time I bring Naylor on? Football by Jilton as well, which went oh, perfect for Venus. Mike, he's bringing <laughs> Naylor on. I'm not having it. <laughs> get Naylor on. Do you remember when, um, when, uh, sorry to interrupt, do you remember when Johnson and Scowcroft used to, um, play up front together and Scowcroft used to be a bit of a scapegoat for Ipswich fans and it would always be, get Naylor on, get bloody Naylor on, Burley. <laughs> <laughs> get him off. Come on, Towen. Towen. So we sort of skip through the how we got to the game and all of that, guys. Yeah, we, we, we got some downtime. Were you on the, on the beers that day causing trouble? I <laughs> Fighting fans. I felt because my father had been at the 78 Cup final, I thought as a father something, it was right to go to this game with my dad. So um, I went with my dad and I'm sat down um, underneath the box my seat didn't have a back is what i remember um yeah the my, pages near the front weren't they the whole yeah, lower in my, tier. Like in my yeah. snotty um vlogger days now i wouldn't accept the view um <laughs> that i had but when we come to the royce goal well i i wouldn't swap Royal that Boxing, yeah. anything these yeah. days were you, just were, you, were you camera side ben or um i'm the opposite side to the hard opposite camera, side yeah. yeah i am as well but i think I mean, there's so much space behind the goal, isn't there? I think I was probably level with the edge of the penalty area. See, I'm, I'm level with about the penalty spot on the far side as the camera looks at it. Yeah, it might so be quite, up there, quite, quite, high, quite yeah. high up. Yeah, not too oh, far from me, Joe. 38 pound a ticket, was so I remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to dig out. I've got the program and dig out my ticket in a second. I can tell you. No, no, no concessions here, again, guys. Adult prices only, apart from that lower tier, wasn't it? I think. Yeah. And you didn't get, you didn't get back on your seat. So Joe, we you talked about. Come on. Sorry, Rich. We talked about Holdsworth and Good Johnson. Shipley and Thorough are a bloody handful. I know they're not in Good Johnson and Holdsworth's class, probably as, as, as players. But they're not going to give us a. Yeah, not going to give us a quiet game. Barnsley are on top here, boys. They're pressing high, aren't they? I think Shipley's problem was he had a handful. <laughs> he shaves his head and listens to it. <laughs> we are going to put this out as a podcast, Joe. You are, you are aware of that. This isn't just for our is that, own entertainment. Is that Barnard coming in on his right oh, foot? Right? Oh, no, it's just Shipley. Well, I just watched back the semi final. Shipley scores from um, exactly that position against yeah. Birmingham. Very good goal, actually. We haven't that's, had a, a we haven't had that's a decent strike, that. Yeah, it's a good save. It gets down quick, doesn't he, right? Because that's Once creeping again. in. We um, haven't we haven't had a goal uh, a attempt on goal yet, have we? Matt, we? Matty Holland had Matt that shot. shot wide, but on target. Uh, I don't know what, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting um, for the XG to come up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, do we subscribe to the view that as much as we love Richard Wright, he wasn't at his best during this really? three-game trilogy? Is that yeah. fair, or was it all so chaotic? Uh, I wouldn't really put my fault for. There's a few good saves, isn't there? Goals. Well, wait till half time in this one, and you're going to be all over him. Yeah. yeah, well, he, he, he makes amends for it, doesn't he? But I mean, he does. like the Bolton goal, I'd, I'd still put that down as a foul. I know, it, I know it was soft, but I'd still put that down as a foul. And he was just beaten by good goals. Is, is that Jono just went down again, or was it Stuart? 
Oh, they cause cause I, cause I, I called it back, isn't it? I thought that was a foul by Lobo. Sorry, Joe. After this game, um, Wright goes off to make his England debut, doesn't he? Against Is it the Malta one gives, straight after? Yeah, and he gives away at least one penalty in that game. So yeah, I think he yeah. gives away two, two penalties. Two. Two, yeah. Exactly two. the same. Over two games, gives away three the, penalties, saves two of them. The first game of the season the following year, he gives one away at Spurs as well, doesn't he? Would you believe, after that Malta game, I guess he wants to get away from the press. Um, right, he comes and stays with, um, what was his wife called? Kelly Hammond, was it? It's Hammond, it's Hammond. Yeah, Hammond. I can't remember. Um, he comes and stays in the hotel. So I saw him like two days after the Malta game um, and he's, he's kind of hiding away. And I always remember in the reception of the hotel with the tabloids with Richard Wright in big close up. Obviously, he was the story of that. Um, England game and he was um, shacked up in the hotel hiding away from everyone but just still... thing a whole, uh, trouser press <laughs> <laughs> he would have he'd have gone if we hadn't gone he up, wouldn't he if we'd lost this Richard Wright would have gone until he? Ben tipped off until Ben tipped off the press <laughs> Ben got his fiver oh, today I would have been taking pictures <laughs> and tweeting him down the Blue Monday account guys Mark Venus is a really good player isn't he, yeah, he is. so good we definitely so underrated that that's, watching these games back yeah. did I oh, think yeah. like, uh, maybe Venus is is better on the ball than he is off it. Wasn't particularly dominant in the air. Um, Decent cross that Didn't have much pace, but so good bringing the ball out from the back a bit before his time, wasn't he? Um, um, this is one of the things. When you've seen us play three at the back this year, just look at McGreal and Venus. The way they... Even how good they are at the ball. How they get forward. Yeah. The sort of quality of balls that they put in. We just haven't had that at all. We started with the overlapping centre-backs a bit, but it just wasn't... Oh, play Gio, cam, on your player Gio. cam. So we're 16 minutes 52 now for listeners. 1-0 down. Um, you'd say fairly even game now. Um, and Barnsley ahead through one bit of one bit of quality, yeah? Yeah, last three or four minutes, I think we've come into it having been very much second best which I don't as I say I don't recall at the time but yeah I think there's just Rich there's just a Start sense of just calm, down. calming down yeah because yeah. I mean you noticed uh, two or three minutes ago Matt Holland just dribbled it forward and just passed it out of play and that's very un-Matt Holland very kind of uh, Jim Jim spoke about clarity of thought he obviously hasn't quite got there in this game Holland yet I love how they, Jim sees the game. They're getting through so much running, though, aren't they? they oh. No wonder they're a bit ragged. When I mean, they both teams are ball. pressing really high, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Did you see what I mean, though, Rich, about it not being the most... I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at that. Frenetic, this is. That's Ooh. a foul, isn't it? <laughs> this is such a good watch. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember whether it was Jim that said it or whether it was Jono or Stuart, because I listened to all the podcasts this week, but they were saying that had this game gone into extra time, they were a little bit Great worried movie. because... Yeah. Because we, we had a few players, like McGreal hadn't played, Jermaine Wright had just come back into the team, Mowbray was sort of pushing 40 at this point, and this was a, a heavy pitch, we'd used our subs and it was going to be uh, an, another half hour and that might have been a real, real slog. Bassett. Dave Bassett looks very calm and collected there, doesn't he? That's it, put a little bit of ice in it. Because it had been a long break between the semis and the finals. Oh, it? it was endless, wasn't it? About two weeks almost, wasn't it? Bit of walking wounded 17. there. Yeah, and this is the 31st, is it? Richard? 20, yeah, 29th. Yeah, 29th. 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 It, was my, it was my ninth birthday the day before. Was it the Saturday then? This is the no, Monday, Monday, isn't it? Monday, 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 Monday. Monday. Oh, I, I, thought it, I thought it was the Monday, yeah. Because um, so, the... So basically two weeks. Brave, Eric Tinkler's Sinclair. just got a stunner on the ankle. Was he at Leeds, Joe? South African guy? Yeah, Tinkler? Is that Eric Tinkler or is that Mark Tinkler? No, it's Eric, isn't it? It's, it's Eric, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was at Leeds then. But there's always a lot of movement around between um, Leeds and Rotherham and Barnsley. That's a nice trap on that, Holland. Oh. It was ball. That's where Wilness was better than Croft. Fair point. Croft would go under both feet and cross over. We'd have had a step so. over, Mikey. Yeah. Yeah. And Croft would have been fine in extra time as well. What time was his curfew that day? <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine Wright's slowly coming into the game, isn't he, as well? But we haven't been for a while. in the game much, Mikey, for this first 20 minutes, have we? No. No. Jilton. But yeah, Jermaine Wright hadn't played for a little while, had he? He didn't play at all in the 
first. No. I was thinking that. He didn't feature his arm today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well honestly, three. guys, from February, I think. Awesome. Oh, hello? No, that's. Slide in, Richard. Slide in. Um, I think the plan from February was it was supposed to be Holland, McGilton and Scowcroft with Johnson and Stewart up front and he just couldn't ever get that on the pitch although I did check and it was on the pitch when we lost 1-0 at home to Portsmouth so maybe I need to, <laughs> maybe I need to um, revise that opinion but. But, but that's a big thing for McGreal and Jermaine Wright to come into a game having not played for well at least Three weeks. I don't know if they played in the Walsall's game. Midgill and so, uh, sorry, McGreal hadn't played for at least a couple of months, I think. Yeah. He gets, so, Mikey, he came back in for like one or two games and then went back out again. Didn't he? Sixty percent right, okay. possession for Ipswich at this point. Guys, no, McGreal did play in the second leg against Bolton, didn't he? I remember no, him. No. No. It was Wayne Brown. Wayne Brown. Wayne Brown, and Wayne, Mowbray. Wayne Brown played right-sided. Uh, no, played left. on the right side of the three at the back. Um, which was quite wow. unusual for him because he was really left-footed. Yeah. But Manu Fettis played the first leg. Yeah. And then what, then there was obviously the injury doubt over Mowbray and then Wayne Brown came in for Fettis in the second leg and then McGreal came in for the final. So. But two players to come and play at Wembley having not played for weeks on end is a, in, a, in the biggest games of their career is a big ask, isn't it? Yeah. How many of these Ipswich players was this the actual biggest game of their career? Here yeah, comes one. So, Rich, what's happening now? I'd say probably all of them, Ben, by the way. Richard Richard Naylor is now coming on for David Johnson, who has not recovered. So, yeah, he didn't look good, did 21 he minutes. He wasn't fit. He was too hyped up. He tweaked it a little bit on 13 seconds. They gave him 20 minutes and... Let him decide, do you think? Yeah. I think he wasn't fit, thought he, thought he was better off and the adrenaline would take care and then realised that it, it wasn't. And then probably, I reckon, I'd imagine it would have been his call to come off, not anyone else's. Did he have a fitness I think test he'd, he'd beforehand? Earned, he'd earned that did yeah. you Did you do that on your, on your interview with him? Did he have a fitness test before the kick-off? Or have I made I that? Don't, I don't think Yeah, he did. He did, because I listened to it this week. He said it but a George Burley fitness test yeah. is that <laughs> like you will pass like an if, fitness test, yeah. if, 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 if you want if you want to play you'll pass it put it that way I think he, <laughs> Burley gave him every opportunity to he's like, Naylor straight away no, straight in box look at that the ball is that well, Naylor Naylor. Yeah. Yeah. Naylor's a different level in this game isn't he he's, he's yeah. well Joe and I were arguing about this on the on the WhatsApp group we sort of had this debate of how our players then were different calibre and I said all of these players would get into any of our teams from the um, maybe from the last sort of seven or eight years and we were sort of going back and forth Joe weren't we about about Naylor and yes I agree this is his this is the um, Everest of his career this game isn't it but I, I think he was a, a good championship level player wasn't he yeah and um, I watched back the highlights of the whole season actually last week and especially to, in the first few months of the season he made a number of real big contributions scored some decent goals I just re always remember him not being a very good finisher no, he didn't it, have the instinct sort of, did he yeah and maybe because I was watching this I, I was watching him in, in my life when I was 12, 13, 14 that a striker that misses chances is just frustrating you maybe don't see everything else they bring to the table and you've especially got David when you've Johnson's got someone like but well. well, yeah. also especially someone like James Scowcroft as well who was a quality hold-up player and could score a few goals as well that you sort of compare him to Scowcroft he wasn't in Scowcroft's league oh. Oof. Oof. Hignett again isn't it was it Hignett camera struggling to find him but yeah wow. he thinks that's the save does he I think Richard Wright does save actually oh this looks like a good angle Rich I think he saves it yeah. Oh, he's unlucky. Oh, he's a good player, isn't he? Yeah. 21 yeah. goals from midfield. He thinks. Oh, that took a deflection, didn't it? 22 goals by the end of this. How many? Uh, how many goals did David Johnson score that season? 23, I think he got, wasn't it? Is that over 20? I mean, that says it, doesn't it? I don't think yeah. he was that. He got over 20, but maybe more. Oh, maybe. Yes. It just, Mike. It just depends on the philosophy of your manager, doesn't it? Sometimes you're better off being a, a runner from midfield in yeah. a Joe Royal or a Dave Bassett team than you are a, a forward in a <laughs> Paul Lambert team, <laughs> um, you know. Yeah, quite quite often though, like a goal-scoring oh, midfielder, goal-scoring midfielder like Hignett, 
Um, they're, Jonathan Douglas. They're not, they're not normally brilliant footballers. They just they've just got that oh, timing. Okay. Like I'd probably put Matt Holland in that in that bracket. Totally Obviously, agree. A pretty good yeah. footballer, but not like incredible. Well, but but what about he, what about he, Frank Lampard? Just seems so, yeah, exactly. I'd put Lampard in that bracket as well. But a lot of it is about timing. The whole game seems to go through him. He seems to be yeah. a playmaker and a goal scorer. Oh, just incredible. I was going to put Tommy Miller in there as yeah. well. Like yeah, Tommy Miller. Tommy Miller never ran a game. But but he'd score 15 goals Ooh. a season. Brilliant. Because Matilden Matilden played Miller a bit deeper, didn't he, Mikey? In the second in the second spell, and he just didn't really influence games that much. No, did a lot of kind of no. unselfish work. But, but, yeah. but Rich, I know, I know what Mikey's he? saying, and I, I think with the way football is today, that um, right, your job is you're a midfielder, you're fit, you've got a good shot, and you're prepared to make 20 runs per game. That, that player, does that player exist as much now? Pro probably not, do they, when you... Ex oh, here's the Hignett goal again, Rich. I think it's look at the bend on it, behind. left. That's such a good shot. He moves left, isn't he, in the air. Well, the way I think that's 57 miles per hour from 30 yards. It's yeah. so, back so, so fast. <laughs> it's like, you, but, Mikey, it's the, it's the players that can hit the ball right, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but it's the, the, the curl's like a natural curl from the power of the ball, I think. But he can't move his feet, Mikey, because of the curl. He's in the wrong. Yeah. He's in the right place if it doesn't curl. So then yeah. I guess that's what yeah. the consequence of it hitting the bar and coming back and hitting him. He's now in the wrong place well, because of the because the dive. Chance. The dive is to he push got, the ball over the bar, isn't it? So yeah, you're right. He, if he takes. Are we yelling handball? He got Sorry, a big Rich. move to Blackburn off the back of this, didn't he? I was going to say, Hignett, yeah. yeah. Did he go to Borough? Was it Blackburn or Borough? Borough, no, he started at Borough, didn't he? Here we go, we guys. Something's going to happen soon, I think. Oh, hello. Did, before we go there, Rich, do we get a replay of Chettle here in the shot? Yes, we are. That's not handball, is it? Well, Who hit the shot? Holland. <laughs> this is where we here need we a replay go. button. I cannot wait for this shit. So Watch the blimp go over the top as well. You can see there. Give you a blimp. Yeah. Mowbray attacks the first one, doesn't he? Doesn't get there. Clap yeah, on, Jim. Clap it to set it itself. Set it. it. Whip. <laughs> Unbelievable head. Of 36 years of age. Oh, God. I couldn't, Mikey, I could not believe it because I'm looking down the pitch. I'm like, we're in the playoff final. We've got Marcus Stewart. We've got David Johnson, James Scowcroft. <laughs> Who's going to score? Tony, Tony Mowbray. <laughs> He's supposed to be on the bench being a coach, for goodness sake. What yeah. a goal, Rich. Towering header, wasn't it? He's got. Is he against two as well? He flattened, he flattened oh, no. two the first time. You can, you can have the whole team underneath that. Morgan. He pins Morgan the second time. You this is like Joe Jordan, Mikey, for God's sake. Look at that. Like, and, and the power in it as well. He gets the hand on it, doesn't he? That's a great oh, angle. Look at that. He could kick the ball that hard. <laughs> 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 if Tony Mowbray well, took a penalty to try and header it. Go on, George. Yeah, they found the most tame part of the crowd for that celebration. Limbs. Unbelievable so header there, isn't it? Oh, it's the way it gets that. But the, Joe, the, the run, the climb, the arm is down, but it's it's fair. Yeah. And Second Miller's goal. in the right place. They don't do a lot wrong, Barnsley, do they? They clear the corner, they close down Magilton, but... Well, and a lovely ball by Magilton as well, we need to talk about that. He had a bit of time, didn't he? he didn't Which of two Mowbray's goals that season were better then? The brilliant volley away at Palace or Blackburn? Was it Black, was Black, Black, Blackburn? Black, Black, <laughs> Joe, any goal that's still rising when it hits the net is always going to win by me. Only beaten by a bar and in or an 18 pass which is move, the, I think. Which is the better celebration, though? That one where he's, he knows he meant it and the one at Blackburn where he looks like <laughs> he, I can't believe what's just happened. I think that header was still rising when it went in. <laughs> We're taking the net off. He only scored goals that are still rising. Can you have a thunder blasted <laughs> header? Is there such a Isn't thing? There a Bruce here we go, here we go. I think we're going to see it again. That's Tony Mowbray's favourite the... album. That. This no, isn't the goal, is it? Is this the replay they got? No. He's up for another one. No one's You're marking him. Totally unmarked. But he's knackered as well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me do that again, Matt. <laughs> Bruce Dyer is making sure that um, he's not going to get blamed for any type of goal here. Oh, we're looking at the goal, are we? There we go. Right. Similar though, Clapham gets it out of the again. This is almost identical, isn't it? Alan Brazil's livid there. 
Mikey, uh, Mikey, 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 I was going to mention that. I know we love Alan Brazil. He's actually a very good summariser when you actually yeah, listen back to yeah, a lot of absolutely. points. He was, yeah. You can see how he got TV and radio gigs. A lot of personality, but a lot of... Jesus. Oh. <laughs> He's That's got a nice nail voice, on yellow card in the world yeah. today. He has, he has his arm up to say he's wonderful. Oh, here's a goal. Here we go. <laughs> plenty of speed and plenty of power in the cross. Oh, great angle, that. This one might be a bit better. Oh. Oh. Saving that. Always so hard when you're back in for a corner and you can't get out and you realise you're all, you know, congested on your own six-yard box and someone gets a run on you if they're tall and powerful like Mowbray. Then what? What Mowbray does so well there is he absolutely wallops the two defenders, but then he gets up and gets out of the box again so he can get another run at it. So he's always <laughs> running onto it. You never saw Mowbray just standing still in the box, always running onto it. And I think it's fair to say it's really swung all the territories for Ipswich now since yeah. since the goal, isn't it? I think we've had most of the territory, but they've just looked dangerous when they have got the ball in our half. I think for the first 15 minutes we didn't have much territory, Joe, did we? Much, much of the game has been played sort of the back line of the pitch has been our centre circle really hasn't it That's nice. oh, this is nice I love how McGreal That's takes the ball forward oh. he's oh we're looking for that one aren't we yeah I haven't seen much of Marcus Stewart at this point though have we I mean yeah. we don't I don't think far from what happens in the second half I can't remember too much that he's done he's, he drops deep to get the ball I guess and starts things off but does he have any many chances I'm trying to remember apart from the one Sure. Oh, he's pulling it's the back post yeah. again. Look, there's no one on him because he starts so far out. Always running in. <laughs> I wonder if Mowbray and Hignett would have overlapped at Middlesbrough, been there at the same time at any point. No, maybe, maybe not. Was... And Hig did Hignett come from the youth system though? So they might have done in that respect. I think so, yeah. Actually, a good crossing chance that for a player of Magilton's ability. Corners four. won oh, four, four to nil on 32 minutes. That tells some story, Joe, about the territory, doesn't it? Mm. I like how we're pressing them in, though. It's relentless at the moment, isn't it? Crosses yeah, and corners. Definitely since the goal. There he is. Oh. But just looking back. <laughs> he flattens three players that time. Oh, he's over it. Is that him? Is that Naylor? Yeah. He could have brought that down, Rich. Now with the over it. Was anyway, wasn't he? Was he? But you can see why people are age. This team was the one that they love watching because it is just yeah. relentless football, isn't it? It's just push on, push on, push on. Try and score goals. It's not really one where you're trying to defend at all. I'm not sure he was off there, Naylor. No, no, but why did they show the linesman there? Had he given it off? I think the keeper was gesturing at him like, why haven't you given it offside? Of course, we had to think this is 20 years ago almost, isn't it? But weird and depressing. Well, the, the, the gap between the FA Cup final and this is now pretty much the same size of gap between this and now. All right, Mike, uh, don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at McGreal again, surging forward. So, the McGreal's really getting oh, this in the is game. A good chance. Oh, oh, what a Holland touch. Score, Holland. Holland. Oh. That would have been the defender. an incredible goal, Mikey. <laughs> yeah. It's the defender uh, blocks it, doesn't he? Gets down really low. I think Holland's trying to guide it in the bottom right corner. Who plays Great the touch football. around the corner there? Say no. 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 And Stewart. Stewart. I like that Holland is thinking Naylor of going with, back across. I, that's why Stewart liked him, Rich. Naylor with his back to goal first time always, always seemed to get the angle for it to come across to the other striker, didn't he? Yeah. A smart like when, play when, that you, is. when you look at sort of football metrics now and it's about passes from the back, progressive passes and stuff, look at John McGreal and Mark Venus in this game. <laughs> they're probably, and they're probably made, they are made more go as well. passes <laughs> in this game than our whole defence has all season. Now it's close to getting in there, isn't it? But I was about to make a similar point, Joe. You compare that to when we play a back three. You know, our centre-backs don't go across the halfway line, do they? You've got McGreal here, who's surging into the penalty area. So You've got Mowbray, when, who's attacking the far post from set-pieces and crosses. When McGreal and Venus are, are doing that, are the wing-backs dropping a bit deeper? 
instructions so you don't see don't much think, croft I don't do you oh, Mikey, no. <laughs> <laughs> just forward isn't it just just basically mowbray sweeping on his own <laughs> well the idea is i suppose one whoever's goes, on the other one side goes, one stays in. yeah tucks back in but and you know the comment I was making earlier in the game about fullbacks and booting it down the line? Well, there always was, if you think of like someone like Alan Hansen or someone, there always was, still even in the 80s, if you were a defender who could play into midfield, that would that would happen. Maybe I'm picking the best one. Right, what are those action areas say? 28% in the Barnsley final third. And 55% in the middle. Yeah, we haven't... Croft and Clapham, we've seen less of compared to... To McGreal and Venus and Mobra, haven't we? That Stuart and Naylor have they've linked up more than Stuart Johnson did in the sort yeah. of ten minutes since Naylor's come on already, haven't That's they? Sure. But Joe, if um, if Scowcroft is there, he does the he's the Naylor to whoever of them he's closest to there, isn't he? If you can yeah. get him on the pitch at the same time, I guess. Look out! The, the whole stadium there was seeing you stand up if you're going up. <laughs> We're all in there <laughs> half now, aren't we? I think I can right. remember that now. There it is, Mark here, yeah. I remembered. Oh, no, I could hear it. Oh, you could hear it, sir. Yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> chanting it. Some more lovely balls from the centre-half position. But right, it's a really especially, especially yeah, isn't well it? Now. Yeah. Well, you talk about, Mikey, like five passes to break the lines. Not if yeah. you've got a good centre-half. You can play it on the, play it on the yeah. ball through to a yeah. forward with his back to goal. And then, yeah, so the, both Midgill and, and Holland were very good midfield runners, weren't they? So you just bypass the midfield sometimes. Sometimes Midgill gets on the ball and plays it about. But most of the time, McGreal and Venus are feeding it into Stuart and Naylor, aren't they? They are straight into their feet and then you've got the yeah, runners off there. Drilled at them and, they, and all of our strikers were very good at just laying it off first time. Look at that. So just replaying the goal again on Sky with 37 minutes in now, 1-1 one, one obviously. Um, cool much, now, isn't it, ben? Yeah, cool much it. more on top now and um, territory is, is ours and that Holland chance now added on. And you, you think of how, you know, Joe talks about modern metrics. What's Barnsley's touches in our penalty box at this point? Yeah, uh, about zero early ones, didn't they? Yeah, oh, no. Bruce, Bruce yeah, Dyer Dyer. Yeah. Yeah. But not many clear cut Shit. chances for us, though, despite the territory. Lots of crosses and set pieces, but no real sights. That Marlon chance yeah. get bodies in the way, didn't he? This is how we ground teams down in the yeah. Burley era, though, wasn't it? It was, if we'd got like a second, Joe says, it was just incessant. Wasn't can it? see that? Look, Mo Mowbray had the ball there, the grill rushed out right, the tilt dropped it. That's so good. It. They both it's put stupid. their arms up, wanting the ball. This is, like yeah. I said, we are a, we're a modern team, aren't we? In that, yeah. If if you put this team into 2020, oh, they wouldn't be it. out of place because it is all. Everyone wants to get on the ball. Everyone Stuart's wants to push on. They want to press. Still not happy with Clapham. Can there. I say Jamie Clapham's had a very poor first 35 minutes, hasn't he? Get him off. <laughs> <laughs> he covers. He covers so much ground. Like, out. He was more like. He was a bit more hit and miss, Jamie Clapham, with his passing, but he's just such a good runner. It's all very central, though, isn't it? We we, we definitely play from the centre out wide rather than... We don't go wide to come in. It's, it's through the middle to go out, isn't it? So Look how wide Venus is there, though, that, as well. That's where you can hurt them. Look, McGreal here. Okay, long ball, but... He almost finds his target, though, eh? Oh, Naylor's it. made it. Naylor. 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 So, I mean, the, the wing backs pick the ball up in high That's a lovely turn by Naylor, isn't it? Right? I was going to say how Naylor received that ball as well. He, t he received it and turned in the same motion, didn't he? Do so you think at this stage Naylor knows he's having an absolute blinder and he's just full of confidence? I think he knows he's on it, Mikey. I, yeah. think, I don't think. I think he's like. Yeah. Um, sorry, Rich. I think he's like. I don't get many chances here. I'm bloody taking this one. I think it's 20 minutes time when he gets compared by Ron Atkinson to Pushkus, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I love That's that it. handheld camera on Magilton. It really just gets the scale of the stadium yeah. behind him as yeah. well. And that massive distance this that the old Wembley... This coverage, this coverage is brilliant. So what, good. What do you think was on Sky Sports 1? From a TV perspective. Uh, <laughs> Cricket, uh, uh, golf... And if you see it, the, the, the pitch there, you can see it's yeah. probably the best stake, can't you? And they're going close on it. Do you miss the old Wembley guys? Yeah. I, I miss it because I only went there once. It was this. <laughs> so. 
it's just I don't know. It just looks right, doesn't it? You see all the old cup finals. You, you know, as soon as you see the TV footage, you know it's Wembley, don't you? you it's what it's, it's what just, you grow up with, isn't it? Yeah, I remember. I remember being astounded by how awful the toilets were, though. I was like, this yeah. is Wembley. How can it be so bad? The whole stadium was pretty awful. Yeah. Really. Was the seats. Well, I think, is... like I say, what I don't, what oh. I don't like about Wembley is how far back behind the goal the sort of stands are there. If, if you're low down there, I've sat there on the continent. They're not great seats, are they? To actually see what's happening. There's these weird you metal bar the things in front of the seats as well. That, that puts you even further away. I think that's to stop people invading the pitch. But, but the new Wembley is a great stadium, but it just it's a bit isn't plastic, quite the same. isn't it? I'll it's just going to take the new Wembley sort of 30 to 50 years to build up all of that history and to, you know, and then people who are our age now who were born, whatever, 20 years after us will probably feel the same way about the new Wembley yeah. as we do about but the, old, about the I, old Wembley. I went to the old Wembley twice to watch England v Moldova and to watch Ipswich win. I've been to the new Wembley probably 50 times and not seen yeah. anything as exciting as Ipswich winning there. <laughs> I was going to say, there's probably there's no sentimental memories for the new Wembley for us, is there? That's the trouble. I suspect if we had a playoff final. Yeah. But we're the, we're the last league team to win a competitive fixture at the old Wembley, aren't we? Because it gets knocked down. Yeah, we're one of about four teams or something, Rich, who haven't been to the new one. Mm. When I say <laughs> yeah. new, the... 15 year old one or whatever because there's, there's only one more match that's played here and that's Kevin Keegan's last match as England manager isn't it? <laughs> right he got he a bit under that to... yeah well, it's a charity shield is this Venus on the right yeah. is that, I think, is that the, I think that game had already happened Rich had it not I thought it was in September it's in September yeah. in Germany I think, I think the charity shield might have been there uh, uh, Rich competitive competitive yeah yeah 42 minutes almost. It's kind of, we've died off a little bit, haven't we? We're kind of, it feels like we're well, almost happy to get to half time and tight, regroup a little bit. Tight close up of Shipley. Um, Richie's just not been in the game, has he? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Got, uh, Haven't seen much of him, have we? He's about to be there, isn't he? Not like that woman in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> like clockwork. Stay classy, yeah. Should we just mention Shipley oh. maybe five, ten times in the next minute and then Joe can get it all out of his system? Yeah, Shipley got it out of his system, didn't he, eh? Me! <laughs> Nader is looking very ginger there. I'm, I'm, I'm worrying about him in the sun. He's had the same hairdo as Bruce Dyer, hasn't he? Been to the same hairdo. Oh, that's a training top, isn't it? Look at, oh, look at the atmosphere in there. I think I had blue hair like Jono that day. Maybe I had not one the same big, style. One of those big blue and white fluffy weeks I had. I was definitely full kit wanker that day. <laughs> Do we have flags as well, guys? Flags. Yeah. I had a budget yeah. unofficial flag. So, uh, me and my family were on holiday as of the Saturday in West Wales. So, we had to drive five hours back to London for the game. And then five hours back to go back to our holiday cottage. Probably wouldn't have bothered down to West Wales for literally one day before driving back five uh, hours. It's two days, well, I think. Oh, dad, that's so a I'd touch. Rather, he'd rather <laughs> wait for the playoff final there than Woodbridge. Yeah. There's McGrill with providing the end of that. Yeah. Back up. I just Ooh. say, um, the last couple of years I've been to several playoffs, all the League One ones and all the Championship ones, the equivalent games. I've seen Fulham go up and Villa go up. And I've gone there. And in the nicest way, I've not given a shit. I've just chilled out, sat down, got Krispy Kreme from the new Wembley Concourse or whatever. And just compared to when your team is there, you know, like the, it was like the most nervous day, wasn't it? Anyway, we're coming up to half time, Rich. I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm just going to see, see it out. Just see it out. Yeah, no mucking yeah, about. But I, but I imagine now football is, seems so much bigger now than it was back then. How stressful that like two week break leading up to Wembley would be now. How many podcasts would get out in that two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> well, especially can you imagine? Just think of the numbers. But um, Joe, imagine like Derby were there last season. Derby uh, constantly been losing out in the playoffs like we have. Um, there's a lot of teams like us, you know, Leeds and Derby, who when you mention the playoffs, Sheffield United all think the same sort of thing. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Overload there. Yeah, yeah, Mogger's points. Look at Mogger pointing. Oh, that's oh, awful he doesn't goal. need to come, does he? And I tell you what, I'm, to I'm, he, he, they're running straight at me. So I'm in the corner where towards is it? 
Who goes down for it? Is it Shipley or Ignit? Ignit. 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 And he's running can straight I just at me. say though, guys, bat batters Stuter against England. This angle doesn't Ignit look against it. I think he, his, yeah. he moves his foot to trip over yeah. right. I, I'm this is the angle. This is the angle. Watch, watch, watch yeah. his right foot. Yeah, he kind of swipes him, doesn't he? But at the time, I was convinced it was a dive. I'm so it angry as well. It is a dive, but it's arguably but it, a penalty but it, but, it, 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 it but it is a dive, but it is a nailed on penalty. But yeah, yeah. absolutely nailed on penalty, isn't it? Yeah. He's but exploited it, a very poor piece of goalkeeping. Alan Brazil he? says his body's momentum captures him. I don't know if it's this penalty, that's, but that's what he says. Doesn't that, doesn't and that was, that was, that was say that Kignett should take this penalty, not Barnard. Mm. And that Barnard, was, but that, Barnard had rattled in about four or five that season, I think. Never but that was right, he's kryptonite, Mikey, wasn't it? Coming off his line, he's, there were several mistakes yeah. of this nature. But maybe they have the, if you get fouled, you don't take the penalty. Rich, here comes Barnard. It's just a weird one when you watch it back in a second, because Wright is leaning really early. Look at the limbs in the stand! Yeah. <laughs> Go on, we're on the counter. Well, it's a really bad penalty, isn't it, when you see it back? Because Wright is basically perched. He's Paul Cooper-esque, isn't he? tried to send him the wrong way, I think. And he bottled but it, he maybe. doesn't. he doesn't do enough with his body to do that, no, Mike. No, no, but when you're, when you're nervous, you, you get all tense, and you start to you start to think... Uh, he might have usually have tried to slot it right in the side, but he'd have thought, don't want to miss the target in the last minute. Watch his... Um, in a little bit. When, when we get a replay, watch his right arm. I think he tries to gesture with his arm to make right dive left rather than right. Uh, Richard Wright had a history of diving right for every penalty for a long time. I'd be interested to look back. Um, he always used to dive right. Uh, check, check that out. Definitely through... I, I remember checking it out through like the 98-99 season when he was making right. right. Here comes the replay. Watch him lean. Two minutes added on. Lean, lean, lean. Yeah. Yeah. Lean well, over. It's not a good penalty. Strong, good strong hand that though. Got it away from the taker. Yeah, yeah. Especially because it is. Oh, this guy! Watch this guy! Here we go, here we go. Watch the guy in the tash. Oh. Shit face! <laughs> <laughs> I feel badly for the guy behind him. He looked like he knew he was going to miss it as well, didn't he? Although you know what it's like when your team's got a penalty, you're definitely going to miss. And when another team's got a penalty, it's like the goal looks like the most massive thing on on the universe, doesn't it? There we go, guys. Half time, and I think we're feeling quite happy with ourselves after that save, right? Yeah, because yeah. I mean, you, you look at you look at how it was panning out, Rich, in the middle of the the half, and like we've kind of talked through, Barnsley start well, great goal for them. We're coming into it, we get the goal, then we're really on top, and really it's just one breakaway, isn't it? But you, you know, when you come in with a penalty save just one minute before half time, you're just happy to be level, aren't you? Yeah. I have a post mortem with a steward about the penalty. Um, he's not. He doesn't care. He doesn't care at all. But he was quite polite about it. But that was a good goal from him. Wasn't it? That was a good strike. We're going to get some um, turn of the noughties uh, adverts in a minute as well because this is on the Sky. So we'll enjoy those too. Yeah, this is a batter Stuter against Seaman. That no. Every every time you see, it, you just think. Don't Look at your main right. <laughs> yeah, watch, watch his right arm that goes up there. But, Good angle, I think what I think what Mikey says is right that, that you just as you get more nervous that angle aiming to the corner it just drifts in and in and in and you're just hoping the keeper dives the wrong way really aren't you that's all you're hoping for that. there it is look at it in its glory that aerial shot Rich is just just beautiful in there here we go oh that I, I, that's that just that red and blue just looks so perfect doesn't it in that in that cut final setting and well, i've edited it there you go that's my name isn't it really crappy edit. <laughs> you get to see the um oh england zimbabwe is that what we're oh, yeah. no, that's the <laughs> great test i wonder who won that one think. england <laughs> <laughs> unless it was a famous drawn test so the, the big thing here oh, that is, and we'll try and we'll try and i'll try and superimpose this in because what you guys are unaware of is i've been moving the footage around so we can see some of the action that we're describing but one of the things that people need to see is um, who is in the studio providing neutral analysis from the playoff games um, and at that point has a really classy tash as well 
Oh, Magellan's wearing a lovely pair of Cuba Kings from the Luke's page as well. Yeah, the, the boots on show are fantastic. You see Barnard and Fiendas. Same as World Cup. Just love that. And didn't they hate that? Shift After the face. penalty miss a minute before half time. Rather spoiling their first trip to the Twin Towers. Don't see many tashes like that these days. So it is one apiece. Still five them. Right, here we go. Goals Ooh. one each. Six attempts on five each. Four, four on target for Barnsley, two for Ipswich. No, five no, corners no, to yeah. Ipswich. Just Ipswich just committed one foul in that half. Yeah, yeah have some of that. I wonder what Big, big Sam Kell will have to say about that. Give the trophy. 58% possession. Look at there he is. There he is. Sam, big Sam. Look at the tash. It's not even there. It's like Neil Warnock's eyebrows, isn't it? What's he saying? I can't actually hear. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed listening to us watch the first half of Ipswich v Barnsley. It's 1-1 with a big defining moment from Richard Wright and the strike of half time. What will happen in the second half? <laughs> There's only one instruction for you. Be careful. What? Yeah. <laughs> you. You. <laughs> Wish. Four. Four.